Okay, good afternoon and welcome to today's Finance Committee hearing where we'll, we'll be adopting the 2020 budget. I'm Council Member Daniel Drum and I chair the committee. Let me introduce my colleagues. We have Council Member Farrah Lewis and welcome to the committee. Thank you for joining us. Let's give her a welcoming round of applause. Uh, Council Member Mark Joni, Council Member Adrian Adams, Council Member Helen Rosenthal, Council Member Jimmy Van Bremer, Council uh, uh, Minority Leader Steve Matteo, Council Member Barry Gredenchik, and Majority Leader <laughs> Lori Cumbo. Thank you all for being here. Today the Council Committee will take the necessary actions for the City Council to adopt the Fiscal 2020 Budget, which totals approximately uh, $92.8 billion. In all, this committee will vote on 11 budget-related items. In, addi in addition, we will also be voting on a fiscal 2019 transparency resolution, intro 1607, to reduce the commercial motor vehicle tax for taxicab medallions and one Article 11 property tax exemption. But before we begin, I would like to take a moment to recognize everyone who helped us get to today's budget adoption. First and foremost, I want to thank Speaker Corey Johnson for his tireless commitment to advocate for a budget that represents the values of this council and this city. It is because of his leadership that we are passing a budget that is both equitable and supportive for everyone and safeguards the city's fiscal health. Today truly marks a victory for us all. I also want to thank the Speaker's Chief of Staff, Jason Goldman, for all the work he did during this budget process on behalf of this institution and its members. Thank you to my fellow Finance Committee members for their partnership, in particular, Council Member Vanessa Gibson, who chairs the subcommittee on capital budget and who has been with me every step of the way. Thank you also to Majority Leader Lori Cumbo, Minority Leader Steve Matteo, Council Members Keith Powers, Helen Rosenthal, Francisco Moya, Barry Gredenchik, Rory Lansman, Jimmy Van Bramer, Adrian Adams, Robert Cornegie, Mark Joni, and Farrah Lewis. Together at the executive budget hearings, we heard over 60 hours of testimony from agency heads on the operations and goals for the upcoming fiscal year and their ability to perform core services. We also heard from over 100 members of the public on the last day of the executive budget hearings on how the budget would affect them. We took what we learned at the budget hearings back to B&T and delegations and negotiated a budget that is, we can all be proud of. And of course, we must thank the staff of the Finance Division. They are spectacular. I know that they have worked long hours, answered a lot of questions from members, and many reports and spreadsheets to prepare. But I want to assure you that your dedication is recognized and very much appreciated. So thank you all of the financial analysts, economists, and administrative support staff who work so hard. And special thanks to the Finance Division's leadership team who spearheaded the effort. Deputy Director Regina Pareda Ryan, Deputy Director Nathan Toth, Deputy Director Paul Simone, Deputy Director and Chief Economist Dr. Ray Majewski, Assistant Director Emra De Edev, Supervising Economist Paul Strum, Unit Heads Isha Wright, Dohini Sampora, Chima Ovacheri, Krulian Francisco, and John Russell, and Senior Counsel Rebecca Chasen. And of course, to the incomparable Latanya McKenney, who leads them all. We thank you very, very much. And thank you to Chuck Davis and Fran Delavecchia and the Appointments Investigations Team for vetting every organization receiving discretionary funding, and to the entire Office of the General Counsel who assisted us with our disclosures. And last but not least, my staff, Robin Forst, Sebastian McGuire, Michael Mallon, my Chief of Staff, Carolyn Tran, and everyone in my district office who kept everything running throughout this process. Now, with everyone properly thanked, let's adopt this budget. The fiscal 2020 adopted budget includes many significant wins for the Council and for the people of the City of New York. This year, we entered into, into budget negotiations focused on securing a responsible, equitable budget for all New Yorkers. The Council was determined that the final budget demonstrate a commitment to strengthen the city's reserves and improve the quality of life for all residents. I feel strongly that we have negotiated a budget that accomplishes these goals and incorporates initiatives that will benefit all New Yorkers. 
as a result of our tendency and persistence throughout this negotiation process. The Council 2020 budget agreement includes, among other victories, a path towards achieving pay parity for all early childhood education employees, both teachers and non-teachers alike, with the commitment that whatever collective bargaining agreement is reached will be appropriately funded. A path towards pay parity for public defense and civil legal service providers with an agreement to build a four-year full implementation plan to reach pay parity by March 2020. And support for human service providers by funding individual community-based organizations' request for documented indirect costs above the current 10% ceiling. These investments will make a real difference to the not-for-profit workers, many of whom are women of color, who provide the critical work and expertise that keep key services running. But these are not the only investments that we are making in the budget. For our youth, the Council successfully negotiated for $30 million for 285 new social workers, including 100 Bridging the Gap social workers, 100 social, social workers for, for middle schools, and 85 social workers who will focus on mental health issues funded by reallocating $10 million from Thrive NYC. 4,000 additional compass slots with $14.2 million in baseline funding, bringing the total number of slots to 51,000. Seven new Title IX coordinators with $857,000 in baseline funding and $1 million for an inclusive LGBTQ curriculum. These are incredible wins for us all. This budget really contains something for everyone. Among the other of the Council's priorities that will be included in the budget are $43 million in the city's parks to support 50 new urban park rangers, 80 parks enforcement patrol officers, 150 maintenance workers and gardeners, forestry management, and the Green Thumb program. $33 million in additional funding for the three library systems. $12.8 million to fund foster care initiatives. $16.6 .6 million in funding for the New York Immigrant Family Unity Project. $11.7 million in baseline funding for senior meals. $26.7 million for cultural institutions. $8.6 million investment to fund additional trash pickups on corner litter baskets and $40 million for census outreach, advertising, and community engagement to ensure that every person in New York City is accounted for in the 2020 census. Throughout the negotiations, we were, we, not, we were not only focused on where spending could be most significantly have a positive impact on New Yorkers' lives and protect the social safety net, but we also made it a priority to ensure that the city be better prepared for any economic downturn that may come in the future. And our persistence paid off. The adopted budget will include an additional $250 million for reserves. This meaningful balanced package of spending is a tribute to the Council's commitment and dedication to the people of New York. We should all be proud of what we have accomplished for fiscal 2020. Now, before we move on, I'd also like to acknowledge that none of this would have been possible without the administration's willingness to work with us to get this budget done. For that, I'd like to thank the OMB Director, Melanie Hartzog, and her entire staff. Now, with all of that good news laid out, let's discuss the items that the Finance Committee will vote on today. Finance Committee members should have a budget package that contains all budgeted related, budget related uh, legislation that must be voted on by the committee and again by the full council at the stated meeting. The packet also includes supporting schedules that are not voted on, but filed with the committee, as well as other non-budget related items that are being voted. I want to strong, strongly emphasize that finance committee members will, be only, will only be given one budget package. So after you vote on the packet items, you must bring your packet and all of its contents to the stated meeting to vote again. Council members who are not on the Finance Committee will be given their budget packet at the stated meeting. A description of all the items were emailed to you by the Senior Committee Counsel, Rebecca Chasen, so I will simply list the items that are on the agenda today that require a vote.
The first item is the resolution adopting the fiscal 2020 ex expense budget. The second item is the resolution adopting the fiscal 2020 contract budget. The third item is a Reso A for the fiscal 2020 capital budget, approving the schedule of changes for the capital budget since the executive budget, including council discretionary allocations. The fourth item is Reso B for the fiscal 2020 capital budget, which is, a, which is approval of the capital budget by, as amended by Reso A. The fifth item is the resolution to approve the new five-year education capital plan for fiscal 2020 to 2024. The sixth item is the resolution approving the 46th year of the community development program and the 45th year at reallocations. The seventh, eighth, and ninth items are the three property tax rate fixing resolutions for fiscal 2020. The tenth item is the resolution approving an expense budget modification for fiscal 2019. The eleventh item is the resolution approving a revenue budget modification for fiscal 2019. The twelfth item is a transparency resolution. The thirteenth item is an LU items, MHANY Dumont, which will receive a partial 40-year Article 11 exemption to preserve 45 units in Council Member Espinal and Barron's districts in Brooklyn. The 14th item is intro 1607, which would reduce the annual commercial motor vehicle tax owed by taxi medallions from 1,000 to 400. The other, do the other documents in your packet, which do not require a separate vote, are a list of the terms and conditions adopted for fiscal 2020, Schedule C and other supporting schedules, and the borough president proposed capital changes. As a reminder to members, Schedule C is a schedule of the expense and contract budgets, and the appropriations for the organizations listed in Schedule C are in the expense and contract budgets. Council members will have to sign a disclosure form indicating whether or not a conflict exists with any of the groups listed in Schedule C or Reso A, which details the designations of capital discretionary funds. If any council member has a potential conflict of interest with any of the organizations included, he or she has the opportunity to disclose the conflict at the time of their vote. If you, if you have not yet signed those disclosure forms, staff from the general counsel's office are available to guide you through the process, so please see one of them before you vote. As a further reminder, please disclose any conflicts you may have with proposed subcontractors that are used by any of the organizations sponsored. These disclosures must be made before the subcontractor can be approved. Similarly, the, the transparency resolution sets forth new changes in the designation of certain organizations receiving local aging and youth discretionary funding, as well as new changes in the designation of certain organizations receiving funding pursuant to certain initiatives in the budget. Organizations appearing in the resolution that have not yet completed the pre-qualification process conducted by the Mayor's Office of Contract Services, the Council or another entity are identified in the attached charts with an asterisk. As with all transparency resolutions, Council members will have to sign a disclosure form. As previously stated, staff from the General Council's Office is available to assist you with any questions or concerns regarding disclosure. Those are all of the items for today. We will take now, we will now take questions from any members if they have them. Okay, seeing none, I will now ask Billy Martin, the committee clerk, to call the roll. William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on finance. All items are coupled. Chair Drum. Uh, before I say my vote, I want to thank Assistant Councils Noah Brick and Stephanie Ruiz, who sat by my side throughout all the executive budget hearings. I believe they're here. Thank you, Noah. And thank you, Stephanie, over here. I vote aye. <coughs> Gibson. Pass. Carnegie. With congratulations to the uh, finance chair, the speaker, uh, the entire finance staff, I proudly vote aye. Combo. I just want to congratulate uh, everybody here, and I want to thank Chair Drum, uh, Chair Gibson, and the entire finance team, 
and everybody that made today possible. And I just want to say this is such a meaningful budget for me as a new mom. It was so exciting to see the progress that we made for our daycare workers and pay parity. As a mom, I got to see firsthand how so many dynamic women, particularly women of color, uh, educate children between the ages of zero and three in such a nurturing, loving, and educational environment. So I was very proud to see that. So proud to see the work that we're doing with our libraries as we go for story time and to see how many parents come there for educational opportunities and reading time. To see one day he'll grow up and have a guidance counselor in his school. The increase of $33 million to culturals where we and so many other families go to for educational upliftment. This is really an exciting budget um, for parents and families who want to raise their children um, with all the educational opportunities that the city of New York has to offer. And to the entire finance division, I thank you for your tireless work and effort and all my colleagues. And to Latanya McKinney, it's so inspiring to see a woman and an African-American woman in this position. While we all know her in inside baseball, she's certainly uh, someone that I wish that the entire city and nation could see a woman of this caliber, of, of this experience, um, leading a body um, at this level. So we thank all of you for all of your work. I proudly vote aye, and I will just say I'm disclosing on the record of the council proceedings that the New York City Department of Education is funded in the budget we are adopting, and my sister is employed by the Department of Education. I proudly vote aye, and thank you. Rosenthal. With gratitude to everyone already named uh, for their hard work and for being patient with me, especially Chair Drum and the speaker and Jason and Latanya and everyone on budget negotiating team. I proudly vote aye on all. Van Bramer. First, I just want to say thank you to everyone who uh, had a hand in this budget as the chair of cultural affairs and libraries. I could not be happier with this budget that reflects uh, record uh, levels of increases in funding and baseline funding for uh, libraries and uh, over $30 million uh, for culturals. Uh, this is a very, very exciting budget and that doesn't even get to capital. Our cultural council initiatives increased uh, dramatically. Uh, it is a very, very good budget. So thank you uh, to everyone involved and I am disclosing on the record uh, that Breaking Ground is funded in the budget we are adopting, and I'm very proud of my sister who works with homeless individuals in the city and is associated with this entity. And with that, I vote aye. Thank you. Gordon Chick. Thank you, uh, Mr. S Mr. Chairman. Um, I want to thank you, first of all, for always being on time at every hearing, and that's greatly appreciated by us who travel a long distance. I see Ms. Adams shaking her head in agreement, nodding her head. Um, I am disclosing on the record of the council proceedings that uh, Queens College, which is a division of the City University of New York, is funded in this budget. We're adopting my son David is a student at Queens College. Um, I'm also a card-carrying member of the Queensborough Public Library, and uh, I'm a graduate of PS201 Queens, and I'm still using that diploma, so that's all on the record now. Um, I also want to thank, Matteo, did you graduate? That's the question. Uh, I also want to thank, I want to thank the staff of finance who, as always, uh, has done a tremendous job and is always available uh, to answer my questions, because I have a lot of them. Uh, I want to thank uh, you, f all of you, and from the speaker on down for funding the Queens County Farm Museum here again. We're going to build that visitor center for all of you who are listening out in Eastern Queens. Um, this was a great budget for parks also. Um, I helped to lead that charge, and I'm really excited. This is a historic day for the park system in New York City. It's probably the one thing that everybody is really, really happy to use. Not everybody is always thrilled to go to school every day. Um, but everybody really loves their park, so thank you. With that, Mr. Chairman, I am proud to vote yes. Adams. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, all of our hats are off to you. It has been my esteemed honor and pleasure to serve for the second year with you leading this amazing finance committee, our fantastic finance division for, this, for the city council. There is no measure for the work that you all do led by our amazing Latanya McKinney. My thanks to you. My thanks also to my colleague Vanessa Gibson for chairing the Subcommittee on Capital Budget, amazing work that you've done. And to our speaker, Corey Johnson, who leads this amazing body of council members, we have seen historic landmarks and milestones take place since his leadership. And to him, I am very, very grateful as well. This has been a, a, an amazing time for women's uh, issues uh, and women uh, in particular. So I am very proud to vote aye on all of the items. And let's adopt this budget. Yeah. Joe Nye. Thank you, Chair. I just want to reiterate some of the comments that were made uh, about you. It's incredible to see this firsthand two years in a row, your stellar performance and duration for all of these hearings, to my fellow colleagues for all of their input of what they've done, to our speaker. But most of all, I can't reiterate the praises oh, that the staff did. deserve for the long nights, the long days. They truly are what makes this institution such a great place and allows us to make a difference for all New Yorkers. Um, this budget's an incredible budget. I'm glad that I was brought in as the lefty on the ninth inning uh, just over a month ago. I was uh, made a part of this committee and I hope that my contributions have been and I hope my contributions are um, accepted for what they are, and that is to make sure that we do the right thing by New Yorkers um, and to make sure that we spend and that we're good stewards of tax dollars. Uh, this budget has some, some incredible and wonderful things in it, some things that I'm not so sure about. Um, but with that in mind, I want to first make a disclosure. It says, I am disclosing on the record of the City Council proceedings that PS 175 is funded in the budget. We are adopted, and my wife is associated with this entity. And that CUNY is funded in the budget. We are adopted, and my sons are and may be students of CUNY. And thirdly, that the, the Bronx Parent Housing Network is funded in this budget. We are adopted, and my brother may or may not be associated with this entity. And this is all, again, to the best of my knowledge and recollection. <laughs> now, with that uh, being said, I vote aye on all except for oh, resolution okay. numbers 962, 963, 973, and the accompanying resolution M174. And the reason for that is in my council district, single family homeowners have the highest effective tax rate than any other district in the city. The highest in the entire city. And I can't vote to put a further burden on homeowners, all New Yorkers, who are already overburdened by real estate taxes. Thank you again. Mario. Thank you. I don't know how I follow may or may not, but I'll try. Uh, I want to start off by thanking Chair Drum. Um, it's obvious to everyone in this room, uh, we don't always agree, but you have been a, a very good partner to myself and to, to my constituents um, throughout this budget process, and I appreciate the bipartisanship and um, focusing on what we do agree on. I think that's what government's all about, and uh, I, I thank you for that and for your leadership. Uh, I thank finance team led by LaTanya, and I've worked with some of you as staffer, uh, certainly worked with all of you since I've been elected, and um, you are all top notch, and you, you treat everyone's priorities as your own priority, and uh, I think we are all eternally grateful for your knowledge and your hard work, so thank you to the, our extraordinary finance team. Um, I am also voting no on the tax rate preconsidered resolutions. I don't think it's a surprise to anyone, and I know that uh, the class shares may not be um, reflect the numbers that will ultimately go into effect, um, but nonetheless, it will increase property taxes for class one properties as is now. Um, I certainly look forward to the, to the findings of the property tax commission that we impaneled, um, and I hope my colleagues will continue to fight with me for property tax relief. 
With that said, and I certainly don't agree with everything in this budget, I don't think that's a surprise to everyone. I am pleased that we were um, able to increase our reserves um, and grateful to Speaker Johnson for working with me uh, to fund many projects and initiatives that benefit my constituents in Staten Island as a whole. So I am voting no on preconsidered resolutions 962, 963, 973, and M174, and I and the rest. I am also disclosing that my daughter attends CSI, that's in the budget. My, one of my sons attends Susa Wagner High School, which we are funding. Another one of my sons attends PS30, which we are funding. Um, my sons and my daughter are in the Summer Youth Employment Program and UAU, and that's in the budget. My brother works at Rumsey, which we are funding. Thank you. Powers. Thank you. Um, I'm proudly voting aye, and I want to thank uh, I want to thank our chair, Danny Drum, who works tirelessly and puts in more hours than anybody can really imagine, making sure that we get to a budget that's fair and that groups are heard and that organizations' um, priorities are are attended to and met. Uh, this budget, with its historic investment in libraries and cultural institutions and parks. I know we'll make many New Yorkers proud and we'll provide many new opportunities for New Yorkers in places where they need it, places like libraries where um, any New Yorker can go and take out a book or learn or spend time in that space. Um, to, I want to really, really thank you, the chair, for uh, days of his life, hours, weeks, uh, that he will never get back but it um, uh, means that this budget is done well. I want to thank our subcommittee uh, chair for capital, Vanessa Gibson, and our tires leader, Latana McKinney, as well. Um, they put in just so much more work than I think anybody can ever imagine, and we, we're really lucky to have everybody, um, this whole team in the finance division. Um, I'm proudly voting aye, and I'm disclosing Mount Sinai is funded in this budget that we are adopting. My mother is associated with uh, Mount Sinai. And with that being said, I proudly vote aye. Thank you. Lewis. Good afternoon. I just want to thank you, Chairman, for your warm welcome and for your leadership and for all you do. Also, thank you, Councilmember Gibson, for your leadership and the finance team that always does an amazing job with the budget every year. I'm very happy with this budget that we have and look forward to continue to working with all of you. Um, I would like to disclose on record that my sister works at York College. I have another sister that goes that attends Medgar Ever College. My mom works at Brookdale. Another sister that works at Coney Island Hospital, and my brother works for the MTA. We're all over <laughs> New York City. <laughs> um, we funded your whole family. The whole family. Um, so I vote aye on all except for Resols 962, 963, and 973, mainly because our district, the 45th Council District, um, has a lot of one family, two family homeowners, and the tax burden has been a major issue for them, and I know that it will continue to be, so uh, that's the reason why I'm voting no, but I vote aye on everything else. Thank you. Gibson. Permission to explain my vote? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon, colleagues, and it's really an honor to be here, and I want to join collectively with the finance uh, team and with all of my colleagues in just saluting you, Chair Danny Drum, for your outstanding leadership. It's been an honor and a privilege working side by side with you as your colleague and your partner in this process. The amount of hours and the labor of love that have been invested in this budget process is truly a reflection of what this council speaks for, and I could not be more proud. It's my second year serving as chair of the Subcommittee on Capital in my sixth budget here, and we could not have done all of this great work without your leadership. So I thank you for that, for the hours that you have invested. Um, it's been an honor joining with you during both the preliminary budget as well as the executive budget and co-chairing many of the hearings, as well as the last day of the hearings when we heard testimony from over 200 New Yorkers and we stayed until the very end. And that really speaks volumes, Chair, to your commitment. So I wanna thank you. I wanna thank the entire council and all my colleagues for their support. I wanna thank our own Olivia Pope, Latanya McKinney, 
thank you for being our phenomenal director, for being an incredible leader, for being patient with many of us and the entire finance division. Um, certainly, I want to recognize the staff that worked closely with me. Nathan Toll has been my right hand. Rebecca Chasen has been my left hand. Noah Brick and Stephanie Ruiz have been both my left and right hand. And Isha Wright and Regina Pareda Ryan and Chima Obichair and Dohini Sampora and all of the finance division. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I do want to take an opportunity to recognize another member of our finance division. This is her last budget, and she formerly worked as my budget director, and I could not be more proud of her. If I have a question at midnight, she is responding to me, and that is one of our senior analysts, Caitlin O'Hagan. Thank you, Caitlin. <laughs> Definitely wanted to put you on the spot and say thank you for all the work you've done and we wish you great success in your new chapter, continuing your higher education and really the finance division, you deserve so much credit. We could never feed you enough to show you how much we love and appreciate you. Um, the investments we've made in this budget in cultural, in the arts, in all of our libraries, our social workers, which is historic, saving weekly Weeksville Heritage Center, all of the things we've done to protect children, families, older New Yorkers, you all have been so consistent and we never gave up. And I want to thank the administration, Office of Management and Budget, our Director Melanie Hartsock for working with us, and certainly the team at OMB. And certainly on a personal note, I have to thank my staff. There's no way I could do this without my team, my Chief of Staff, Wendy Gallegos, and completing his first year at as my budget director, Justin Cortez. I thank you so much. And with that, I vote aye on all and look forward to passing the budget later on today. Thank you again and thank you to our speaker, Corey Johnson. I vote aye on all. I vote 12 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. All items are adopted on today's finance agenda with the exceptions of resolutions 962, resolution 963, and M174 with resolution 973 are adopted by vote of nine in the affirmative, three in the negative, and no abstentions. Okay, thank you very much, and um, this has been a wonderful, wonderful experience. Thank you, Billy, also, for always being here for us, mm -hmm. and um, I just want to remind members to make sure that you bring your envelope with you to the stated. You need to have that with you when you come into the stated meeting, and with that, yeah, and the state is at three o'clock, so we will see you all there. Thank you, and with that, this meeting is adjourned.